This episode of Tech News Day is sponsored by Stitch Fix. Once again, I am asking you to please wash your hands. Yes, that's right. More COVID-19 news this week and probably every week for the foreseeable future mm -hmm. until we both die. Because this situation affects basically everything. Even our monetization. Nearly every video we've done in the past month that even includes the word coronavirus or COVID-19 has been demonetized. Yeah. So th thank you, big thank you to Patreon supporters and the sponsors who sponsor this show. Because yeah. uh, we're going to be talking about this for a while. It's huge. It just was upgraded to pandemic status. Yeah, the WHO were holding out on uh, that classification because obviously it's going to make a lot of people panic, but there was no avoiding it because uh, it fits all the criteria for a p pandemic. It's yeah. spread across uh, a lot of places. Yes. And with each passing day, there's more and more to cover about this viral disease that's now been found in over 100 countries. It's a lot. It's everything. But let's start things off with some news from where this all started. Wuhan, China. Now, this entire city has been under lockdown for a month and a half at this point, which some on the ground there have described as a living hell probably understandably, mm -hmm. but uh, school is still in session, just remotely. And for kids in Wuhan being trapped at home, unable to do anything but schoolwork for so long, it has driven some of them to desperation. According to a recent article in the London Review of Books, quote, schools are suspended until further notice, with many workplaces also shut. Notoriously absent Chinese fathers have been forced to stay home and entertain their children. Video clips of life under quarantine are trending on TikTok. Children were presumably glad to be off school, until, that is, an app called DingTalk was introduced. Students are meant to sign in and join their class for online lessons. Teachers use the app to set homework. Somehow, the little brats worked out that if enough users gave the app a one-star review, it would get booted off the App Store. Tens of thousands of reviews flooded in, and Ding Talk's rating plummeted overnight from 4.9 to 1.4. The app has had to beg for mercy on social media, saying, quote, I'm only five years old myself. Please don't kill me. Jeez, I love it. I love it. It's, it, it's literal, like, uh, age warfare. Yeah. Because you're going to get all the parents who are like, no, this is a good thing, going yeah. on and giving it great reviews. That's what's happened. And according to the website TechNode, which focuses on the Chinese tech world, quote, in an attempt to appease their anger, DingTalk uploaded an apology video, which, by the way, is hilarious and weird, <laughs> on Chinese streaming site Billy Billy. The video featured memes and cartoons singing a catchy tune with lyrics begging for better reviews, like... I know, guys, you were not expecting such a productive holiday. And please don't give me any more one-star ratings. <laughs> I was chosen for this job, and there is not much I can do about it. Uh, the video has been viewed nearly 17 million times. In response to Ding Talk's please, a widely circulated joke, students wrote in the review section they were willing to give Ding Talk five stars, but in five installments. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get five one-star reviews. Uh, yeah, well, the review bombing, it didn't actually work, though. Uh, Ding Talk, it's still up and running. But hey, it was worth a try, and uh, a little bit of social engineering that they got to experiment with. Yeah. So they're actually the kids are actually learning something. Yeah, they're learning uh, some real life lessons here. True. Uh, yeah, you know, good for them. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently, Ding Talk's ratings they weren't great to begin with, though. Before COVID nineteen, it was mainly used in business, and it functions a lot like Slack, except with way more ways for your boss to spy on and nag you without uh, with stuff like location tracking, uh, annoying notifications, and mandatory red receipts. Yeah, so they hate it. Yeah, uh, from the, the TechNode article, quote, Despite being the number one business app in China app stores, DingTalk has gained a bad reputation for enabling companies to micromanage, monitor, and exploit its employees. So, uh, if you think that's bad, wait till uh, your boss starts doing this to you here in America when you have to work from yeah. home. Yeah, I mean, like, this is all, it's just an extension of what we have here. But, like, di on DingTalk, they can literally, like, see... If you go, like, I'm going to get lunch, your boss can, like, see where you are in the city. Yeah. If you say you have to go to a doctor's appointment, the boss can, like, verify that you actually went to the doctor's and, like, how long you were there. Yeah. Yeah. And we, Zoom is going to integrate this very soon. Mm -hmm. By the way, like, that's a good company to invest in right now with the stocks being so low because it's, it's literally just business yeah, telecommunication it's, software. It's been booming. Uh, I, I really missed the boat on that one. Yeah, we definitely did. Anyways, despite the situation that we're all in, stuff like Ding Talk. And all that, it really drives home, uh, despite our differences in language and culture, people around the world, they're not that different. No. We hate our bosses. Yeah. And we will social engineer an app to, into non-existence to yeah. not do homework. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the people of Earth, they all agree. Fuck homework. Fuck management. Yeah. It's the thing we can all get behind. It's, it's what unites us. As this virus spreads like a, a girl fresh out of college who's trying to discover herself by visiting every country in the world. Jesus. <laughs> 
Now, of course, with the disease now spread across the world, including here in the U.S., where it's basically impossible to actually get tested, and therefore no one has any clue how many people are actually carrying the disease. Though, some estimates are saying that uh, once it hits its peak, it's going to be in the millions. Yes, yeah, high millions, seventy to one hundred and fifty million, and that's from a U.S. official. Yeah, but we don't know. So. Uh, <clears throat> In lieu of all that, schools and businesses here, they're increasingly telling people to work from home. Seattle and the San Francisco Bay Area have both been pretty heavily hit with new coronavirus cases in recent weeks, and that's where most of the big tech companies are based. So these companies have all embraced working remotely. Uh, Microsoft told all employees in the Pacific Northwest and Northern California to please work from home, and thankfully, uh, their hourly employees will still be paid in full despite their hours being cut. Oh, that's which is good. good. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, both Facebook and Amazon have had an employee test positive uh, in the Seattle area, which has resulted in Amazon telling workers to please ro work remotely if possible, and Facebook just completely shutting down their Seattle office altogether. Uh, Amazon has also told workers in New York and New Jersey to work from home. Let the robots do the work. Yeah. They don't need to pee. Anyways, most recently, Google told all of its employees across North America to work from home. This is the right call for any business where the work primarily consists of using computers and going to meetings, though. It's, it, it just makes sense. Yeah. It's just a shame that it took the threat of a global pandemic to get there. Yeah. But hopefully everyone comes out of this realizing that office work is kind of pointless. Yeah. If your productivity doesn't change, there really is no difference. Yeah, it's a great uh, it's a great case study for what will hopefully catch on once society rebuilds itself. The only thing, as someone that works from home, the only thing I can say is uh, there are a lot of people that will end up not enjoying this because it is very it's lonely. Um, you, it, it's you're very isolated when you yeah. just work from home. Yeah, it's it's good to go. You know, go on a walk. Yeah. Uh, not don't go anywhere. There's too many people, but go yeah. on a walk. When uh, there's not a pandemic, you go to a nice coffee shop and you yeah. don't take it to go. You sit yeah. and you listen to the conversations around yeah. you. Maybe join in on one if you hear something that piques your interest. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, there are still plenty of other jobs that require your physical presence, and those are also the jobs that are great for spreading illness, like retail and food service. These, they're also, you know, these positions require people that are the least likely to have paid sick days and good insurance, or any insurance at all, yeah. depending on the employer. On the upside, though, this coronavirus situation provides a great opportunity to publicly shame these companies, and sometimes bullying and shaming actually works. Yeah, so Darden, which is the parent company of the Olive Garden and the Yard House, along with several other brands, uh, they do not provide paid sick leave to their 170,000 employees, except in states where it's the law. It's the perfect situation for illness to spread. Mm -hmm. Or at least, it was. See, this writer named Judd Legum published an article this week about this Darden situation in which he interviewed various employees who talked about basically being forced to come into work sick, along with a good breakdown on why that is bad. And uh, within hours, Darden changed their policy to now allow for paid sick leave for hourly employees. So. Shame works, guys. Yeah, that's that's a big thing in all of this is uh, we're going to see, you know, everyone in, in America, at least, understands the, the vague example of these companies not allowing sick leave. But we're going to get direct examples nonstop of this specific virus being spread by people who were sick but were forced to come to work. Yeah. And, uh, like, I mean, we talked about it in last week's episode. There, this is very bad. Yeah. But there might be some silver lining in all of this yeah, because I mean, it might change us all as a social species here in America. For a lot of people in this country, the idea of healthcare is like that's between me and my doctor and my insurance company. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. It's not perfect, but it's fine. But like the, the concept of public health in, in general, in terms yeah. of contagious uh, illnesses is uh, we're You're really getting a good taste of like why uh, the idea of public health is uh, important. Yeah, and this was said weeks ago, but it's it's very Im important to uh, say is you're only as healthy as the sickest person that you've yeah. come in contact with that day. Yeah, it's not the ceiling, it's the floor. Exactly. Anyway, meanwhile, back on the topic of education, uh, a bunch of colleges across the U.S., more and more each minute basically, have canceled in-person classes in favor of online classes, including Harvard, Stanford, Columbia, Princeton, UC Berkeley, and many more. My wife teaches a, a night class at uh, LA University, and they uh, let her know, I think, yesterday that they're doing all uh, remote classes for at least the next month. Because all their students are coming back from spring break next week. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, that's probably bad. Yeah. It's probably real bad. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so canceling classes, doing it remotely, very smart. Because like restaurants 
and other retail businesses, uh, college campuses have thousands of people crossing paths all day. Perfect for a disease outbreak. Okay. Oh man, Daytona Beach and Panama City Beach this year, they're going to be so sick. So petri dish. <laughs> yeah. uh, for the most part, closures of high schools and primary schools has only happened in a few areas that have been hit particularly hard. But it would not be at all surprising if more schools and more places sent their kids home indefinitely. We're going to have our own ding talk real soon. Yep. Real soon. And we're going to take that shit down. We're going to review bomb it. It's our job as Americans mm -hmm. to review bomb this app, whatever it is. I'm doing my part. Yeah. Uh, one of the biggest ways in which COVID-19 is being shown to be a serious concern has been the cancellation of major large events. Uh, and in previous weeks, we've talked about uh, all the tech events that have been canceled, postponed, or made online only. Over the past week, the biggest cancellations include the following. TwitchCon Europe, Emerald City Comic Con that's in Seattle or Portland? I don't remember. I think it's Seattle. Uh, E3, obviously, <laughs> <Yeah>. and <laughs> that's huge. And for the first time in 34 years, South by Southwest. Another absolutely massive event. 400,000 yeah. people yeah. every year. Uh, the E3 cancellation, it happened most recently. Uh, it was actually confirmed Wednesday morning. But yeah. Tuesday night, uh, Devolver <laughs> Digital kind of like spilled the beans. It's yeah. great. Uh, they posted an ominous tweet saying, cancel your E3 flights and hotels, y'all. Well, they knew what they were talking about. Because yeah. <laughs> it was confirmed the following morning. Yeah, and so, good for them for putting that out there. Yeah. I mean, spilled the beans. Yeah. Interestingly, this E3 cancellation, it comes off the heels of unrelated setbacks for E3. Uh, longtime E3 collaborator Jeff Keighley announced he wouldn't be participating this year. Uh, E3's new creative team, I am 8-Bit, they also quit recently for unknown reasons. And on top of all of that, big companies like Sony have been increasingly skipping E3 altogether. Uh, the convention has just, in general, been struggling to hold on to its relevance. And here we are with the coronavirus. Yeah. So it sounds like, at the very least, um, for those of us who simply watch E3 presentations online, there may not be much of a huge difference this year. Gaming companies are going to still want to hype up their products. Live audiences are not. There just won't be that cavernous applause that we're so used to. Which we're we're never going to get the, uh, the you're perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but he, that, here's another problem, though, is like things like E3 specifically. I'm not like Comic Cons and stuff like that. They will bounce back because those are fan forward events. Mm -hmm. E3 has been shifting towards fan forward in the recent years, but they're mainly a marketing advertising. Yeah. The, the original the purpose. Industry, of, yeah, yeah. The original purpose of the event was to get retailers to like buy up the stock of these games. Yeah. And, and they've been saying for years like E3 is is becoming more and more pointless. And yeah. this year, this year, if they manage to pull off the entire thing without actually needing a Convention. It won't exist. Yeah. Everyone's going to be like, oh, okay, so why are we spending millions we of dollars? Yeah. And it's, you know what? The company behind it for uh, fleecing all these companies for years, comeuppance might be deserved. Uh, anyway, South by Southwest, it is uh, particularly unique because it's actually three events back to back over nine days. It's a tech conference, a film festival, and a music festival. Uh, official attendance last year was around 280,000 people, but since it's basically a citywide event full of unofficial events all across Austin, the actual total num number of people who converge on Austin during South by Southwest is about twice that. Like I said, yeah, like 400,000 people. Unless you've like been there, it's, it's hard to explain how much of a... like complete citywide event. Yeah, South it's like South square West. miles. Yeah. And there's like satellite events that shoot off from it that take over yeah. entire... The entire city participates yes. in it. So, I mean, they were probably right to cancel. Mm -hmm. But doing so just a week before the event was scheduled to take place means a whole lot of people are losing a whole lot of money and opportunity. Uh, all the gig workers who had sweet nine-day gigs lined up, they're now screwed. All the filmmakers and musicians who planned on attending to get their big break are now scrambling to find alternatives. And the festival itself is shit out of luck because their insurance policy doesn't cover disease outbreaks. Wow. Whoops. Uh, it's unknown how much money they're out here, but it's going to be a lot. Uh, they've already laid off a third of their employees. And uh, businesses all over Austin who depend on South by Southwest for a nice annual bump in their revenue, they're all going to suffer. Yeah. Like they uh, big time. If you run like a bar or restaurant or anything like Ooh. that in Austin, you make I, I would say a you, lion's share of your money for yeah. the year in that. And you depend on this bump in the middle of March to be like, all right, that's gonna cover that's gonna cover the cracks and up a little bit. Now, not only are you dealing with the downfall of South by Southwest, but also just the general yeah, lack people of in general aren't going. Yeah, off. yeah, it's real bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways, as we've been predicting for a few weeks here, uh, it was announced that, yes, Coachella has now officially been not canceled, but postponed 
to at least October. Yeah, uh, it's when, when it's fucking freezing out there at night. So uh, that'll be interesting. I <laughs> if the if the if the coronavirus thing is all settled by then, I kind of want to go because this will be the one time in history that you'll get to go to Coachella in October, which is kind of unique and cool. Yeah, yeah and yeah, Rage yeah. is playing, yeah, so. Yeah. So we'll see. <laughs> Anyways, this was starting to seem more and more inevitable uh, with Riverside County declaring a public health emergency. And despite DJ Snake's last minute desperate plea to cancel coronavirus, not Coachella. Sorry. Sorry, DJ Snake. Coachella is at the very least being <laughs> postponed. Uh, it, was, uh, there was, it was a great back and forth we had because I realized yeah. if we just get the coronavirus to say something racist, yeah. we can all just cancel it and it'll be gone the, forever. The coronavirus had an epic gamer moment and, yeah. uh, well... He's going to say the end. lost all its sponsorships. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the combined attendance for Coachella's two back-to-back weekends, plus, by the way, Stagecoach, the country music festival, it's only one weekend, but it yeah. is just as big as a Coachella weekend. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Stagecoach comes right after Coachella. It's country music the version of Coachella is just country music. That adds up to around 325,000 people total. And yeah, if any of those people were carrying COVID-19 and decided to attend anyway, that is a recipe for disaster. Or if they didn't know that they had it because yeah. it takes a week for symptoms to even show up. And in most cases, especially at Coachella, the age range that attends it won't even know that they have it because yep. their symptoms will be so minor. Yep, yep. But for those old hippies who show up, it's a death sentence. It is. Yeah. Now, it doesn't stop there, though. St. Patty's Day, my favorite holiday. It's just a week away. Rest in peace, Chicago. But if you were planning on enjoying the festivities in either Dublin, Ireland, or Boston, or Chicago, too fucking bad. Mm. On, the other, on the other hand, though, New York City is still somehow confident that hundreds of thousands of shit-faced people crowding their streets at once is a risk worth taking. Sure. Uh, maybe that'll change by the time this episode goes up, but uh, it really, I hope it does. Uh, it, it's a bad idea. You should probably avoid that shit like the plague because it is kind <laughs> of a plague. Um, but yeah, that's that's too bad. Over in Las Vegas, though, the number one destination of choice for running from your problems. They are experiencing problems. They are <laughs> feeling the coronavirus crunch as well. Yeah. Several major hotels have announced that their famous buffets will be closed for the foreseeable future. Which is a very smart thing because those are disgusting yeah, buffets anyway. are... Uh, when you have to literally put a sneeze guard up on top of food, it, you don't really want to be eating there regardless of the protection like they provide. Every fucking week on Twitter, you see some weird old man sampling soup at a buffet. Just shameless. Mm. Yeah. It's gross. Uh, so this is good for the restaurants there, I guess. Yeah. But attendance in Vegas is going to be down in general. Uh, my wife was supposed to go this weekend. Because uh, she was meeting up with her cousin or something like that, mm -hmm. who was there for a conference. Conference got canceled. Cousin's trip got canceled. So luckily, my wife's trip got canceled. Yeah. If you're somehow still going to Vegas uh, and you like playing slots, bring uh, the nap, the, the you, wipes. Yeah, get, just have a towel, some gloves. I don't know. It's a lot of touching. Yeah, you're gonna get like the people are gonna have to bring around like those golf towels for gambling. <laughs> just gonna use it the yeah. entire time. Because yeah. you can't, like, hand sanitizer, still kind of hard to find. Uh, uh, surgical gloves or medical gloves also becoming increasingly hard to find. Yep. Uh, they fucking sold out a LaCroix and Bubbly the other day at my Target. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Oh, shit. This I'm is gonna, a pandemic. When they when they show up again, I'm going to literally load my truck up with all of yeah. the, I'm going to look like one of those for. I'm going to look like one of those toilet paper guys, but with fucking sparkling water. Yeah. Well, you need you need water. Yeah. Well. Anyways, the disease has also affected our nation's capital. And we're not just talking about the church in D.C. where the priest tested positive, and now the entire congregation is under quarantine because he was literally hand-feeding them all communion wafers. Amazing. Church is canceled, kids. Uh, no, we're talking about our government and the people who run it. Um, but I guess before we get to that, we should talk about this week's sponsor, since this is looking like it's going to be an all-coronavirus episode, and we've barely scratched the surface. So yeah, th thank you. Out. <laughs> thank you for the sponsors. <laughs> like, it's, yeah, yeah. it is... It has been a real rough month for monetization. So, yeah. uh, yes, uh, please check out Stitch Fix. This episode is sponsored by Stitch Fix. Personal style is like a fingerprint. Everyone has their own. Wherever your style, the expert stylists at Stitch Fix are ready to help you express yourself. Stitch Fix is an online personal styling service that delivers your favorite clothing brands right to your door. 
To get started, go to stitchfix.com slash newsday, answer some questions about your preferred style, and your personal shopper will ship you a box of clothes, shoes, and accessories. With Stitch Fix, everyone can look their best. They have solutions for men, women, and kids all over the U.S., and now the U.K. There's no commitment required, and you only pay for what you keep. Shipping, exchanges, and returns are always free. Plus, the $20 styling fee is automatically applied towards anything you keep from your box. You'll never have to worry about looking good again with Stitch Fix. Get started today at stitchfix.com slash newsday and get an extra 25% off when you keep everything in your box. That is stitchfix.com slash newsday. I'm actually wearing a shirt I got on Stitch Fix uh, just the other day. I'm wearing a locust shirt because of the plague recovery. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I will say, it is, it is, uh, we're, we're in a unique position because our uh, careers aren't really affected. They might be enhanced by the fact that everyone's home watching I YouTube mean, videos. Yeah. And I would say 99% of the things that sponsor this channel are uh, items that you can get delivered to your door that you that are pretty essential. Yeah, don't Clothes, go down to the department store. There's people are sneezing <laughs> all over the place. Just have it come to you. We've we've really uh, dug ourselves into a unique situation. So yeah. thank you to the sponsors. Uh, anyways, uh, back to the coronavirus and our government. President Trump has held multiple press conferences where he's either lying or demonstrating a complete lack of understanding about the situation. It's a mess from the top down, and we don't really need to get too deep into it, but the strategy from this administration seems almost as if they'd prefer to keep the official number of infections down, no matter how many people are actually infected, yeah. to save the stock market and, uh, I guess, reduce panic. But, yeah, they're basically... It's, yeah, it's it's so fucking weird. The he, reason our tests are... Our, our, uh, infection numbers are so low is because tests aren't going out and when they do go out they seem to like try to hide the numbers. Yeah, and there's this circular logic especially among a lot of Republicans where they're like why do why why is everyone treating this like such a big deal? There's only like a few hundred cases. Well, it's that's like, cuz that's you yeah, we only need, people you tested. We need the funding so we can test because there's almost certainly Way, way, way more people sick. And we've said it before. It's that mindset of you I, you can't have yeah. cancer if you don't go to the doctor and get out diagnosed of sight, with it. Out of mind. Yeah. A great strategy. He died me. of old age because he refused to see the doctor. Yeah. No. So, yeah, there needs to be a lot more test kits sent out. But so far, yeah. not really happening. I mean, hey, look at this chart from earlier this week showing the number of tests done per capita compared to other countries where the disease is present. It's bad. And there's almost certainly a lot more people infected in the U.S. than we even know about. That is a certainty. Yep. Individual states are now going ahead and just making the test themselves, which good, I guess. Yeah. And the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, they seem to be pumping their money into their own testing kits. Uh, but the CDC and HHS, they really fucked up by not having tests ready weeks ago when the disease yeah. was in a position where it would have been a lot easier to contain. Mm. Now, if... And when there's reliable testing available, those numbers, they're going to go way up. And states, they're also stepping in in other ways, too. Here's, here's some wholesome news. <laughs> New York State, you know, not enough uh, hand sanitizer around. They so solved the problem. The state of New York, they came out with their own affordable hand sanitizer for people who haven't been able to get it due to all the hoarding and shortages. Way to go, New York. Oh, wait, sorry, we regret to inform you that the New York State official hand sanitizer is the product of slave labor. I mean, prison labor to be specific, but yes. it's, it's slave labor. People making, uh, what, 70 or 80 cents an hour uh, yeah. doing this? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, meanwhile, many of the same people in our government dragging their feet on dealing with the situation in a proper way have made themselves uh, exposed to COVID-19 at uh, two recent political conventions. CPAC, the Conservative Political Action Conference, was attended by both Donald Trump, Mike Pence, and various other conservative lawmakers, and one attendee later tested positive for COVID-19, having been exposed to it before the conference. There was, of course, a lot of handshaking at this event, and uh, following the news, several politicians have decided to self-quarantine, including Ted Cruz, who is most likely using his time at home to look up a little porn -a rooney Kind of like a little porn or Rooney. Yeah. Now, another politician currently under self-quarantine is Representative Paul Gozar of Arizona, who spent most of last week loudly complaining that there is no need for emergency funding to deal with COVID-19, before quickly finding out that he'd spent a bunch of time at CPAC with the person who tested positive. So, uh, anyway, he seems to be taking the situation very seriously, uh, as evidenced by this tweet featuring a still from the Korean film The Great Battle, and the caption, Been thinking about life and mortality today. I'd rather die gloriously in battle than from a virus. In a way, it doesn't matter, but it kind of does. Wow, deep. Uh, uh, this guy, Paul Gozar, uh, he previously worked as a dentist, by the way. He has absolutely no military experience, 
So uh, a bit of a weird feat. Bring those but, little uh, drills into battle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, when, yeah. Matt Gates. <laughs> oh, that's a whole. Matt Gates seems like the patient zero for uh, like Congress and the Trump administration. So Matt he, Gates, uh, he wore the gas mask. Yeah, uh, he's like, this is so dumb. Let me then one thing. of his constituents died of COVID nineteen. Uh, he was he boarded Air Force One after interacting with uh, the guy at uh, CPAC. Mm-hmm. Then, in his way to uh, save people on his way back to Florida. He drive he drove to Florida from Washington DC, slept in Walmart parking lots, which like good for him. At least he's not yeah. going to a hotel and like spreading it around. It's just funny to be like Florida man Matt Gates. Yeah. Who wore a gas mask on the floor and went to CPAC and rode Air Force One, now sleeping in Walmart parking lots to stifle disease spread. Yeah. It's uh We're living in crazy times, it's people. A silly, silly time. And Anyways. for the youth watching online and playing games all day. Just enjoying the circus. Gamers will inherit the earth. Yes. Anyways, in addition to CPAC, there was also APAC, which is the American-Israel Public Affairs Committee Conference. Uh, they had four attendees test positive for COVID-19 after attending the event in D.C. early this month. Also in attendance, uh, Mitch McConnell, Mike Bloomberg, <laughs> Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz is two for two on the coronavirus. He's convention. getting that scuzz everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, many, many, many more sitting politicians, pretty much all of them Republicans, including Mike Bloomberg. You get what you fucking deserve! <laughs> is the, uh, I'm being jokerified every day by yeah. political, political shit and by the COVID-19 virus. Yeah, all of these people who expose themselves potentially to this disease, uh, their official stance leading up to this, and even following it, has largely just been basically this whole coronavirus situation. It's being blown out of proportion to make the president look bad and hurt the stock market. And uh, yeah, the, the stock market certainly has reacted about as well as you'd expect. <laughs> Stocks react. Yeah, it's the best Fine Brothers video. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's reacted very badly, by yeah. the way, uh, if you're not connected or your parents haven't frantically called you. Uh, some are calling it the start of a recession, which would be right on schedule, really. I mean, it's been almost it's a little it's over 10 years. years. Yeah, it's 12 years. But uh, yeah, we'll see. The virus affects commerce in far-reaching ways. It's not just factories in China being closed. Uh, people aren't traveling or shopping or going out. Offices are sending their entire staffs home. It doesn't seem like much at this point, but spread across the entire world. These things obviously make investors panic and yeah. it makes the value of companies go down. They have an effect. Yes. On top of all that, uh, much fewer people are driving, which is good. It's not just in China either. Here's the... <laughs> Here's the 405 freeway here in L.A. yesterday at around, you know, rush hour time when it normally would be just absolutely packed to the gills with cars. For reference, here's what it normally looks like during rush hour. So, hey, that's cool. Get around fast. And the same is true in major cities all across the country and across the world. There's also fewer planes flying, which means fewer emissions overall. This is all great news, right? (laughs) Yeah. Yes. But the side effect is that fewer people are buying gasoline. So now there's an oil price war happening between Russia and Saudi Arabia that has caused the biggest one-time dip in oil costs since the 1991 Gulf War and has driven the cost of oil down to a price that most energy companies outside Saudi Arabia cannot turn a profit on. Like it or not, oil is a big part of the global economy. So uh, this, too, is helping to contribute to what's looking more and more like a recession. Old people in Texas are fucking pissed. And they're, they're going on Twitter. Yeah. And they're angry. Yeah. <clears throat> Anyways, last week uh, we checked in on Italy, and they had just experienced a bit of a spike in new coronavirus cases. Mm-hmm. Well, let's see how they're doing a week later. And, uh, oh, my God. Jesus Christ. Yes, there are over 10,000 confirmed cases in Italy now, uh, more than Japan and South Korea combined. And both of those countries, they got hit much earlier. The entire nation of Italy is now under government lockdown. It's the most extreme government response yet outside of China. What this means is uh, travel is only allowed for work and all large gatherings and venues are closed. That includes Italy's football league, which is suspended indefinitely, as well as schools, universities, museums, historic sites, and theaters. Yeah, and uh, I think most L.A. sports teams are... They're uh, looking like they might go broadcast only. Yeah, they're going to go broadcast only. Uh, My favorite take on that situation... See LeBron, what LeBron said? No. I, I refuse to play in empty stadiums. I mean, it would be weird. Yeah. My favorite take on it was just like, just allow one fan per team on opposite sides of seating. Yeah. One super fan. So the mascots. Got, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> that was like a supporters section, like in, in soccer, but yeah. just one person with a giant that way, flag. The disease can't spread, but there's still a presence. There's just the one person with those clackers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, though, Italy's neighbors, uh, 
might not be taking this as seriously as they should. For example, over in France last weekend, thousands of people put on blue makeup and converged on a small town to break the Guinness World Record for largest gathering of smurfs. <laughs> Uh, the town's mayor justified this, saying, We must not stop living. It was the chance to say we are alive. I mean, yeah, for now. Also in France, apparently the myth that cocaine kills the virus has persisted so much that the Department of Health is tweeting out official notices about it. No, cocaine does not protect against COVID-19. There's a lot of, uh, in America, about uh, drinking booze. Yeah, a lot of people it. are under the idea that if you just <clears throat> stay drunk, like the entire time, the, you know, you, you can't latch alcohol on. Alcohol can't survive in a drunk body. That's um, it's not true. Yeah. Anyways, between uh, the time that we film this and the video goes up, there's probably, you know what? I'll guarantee it going to be lots more COVID nineteen news that we missed because this is basically the only thing that's happening right now, and it's happening very, very fast. Hopefully next week we can talk about some actual tech news that doesn't involve a global pandemic. But for now, that's that's everything. Yeah. There's no like, even if there is like news coming out, all the air is being sucked out of it by uh, the next big announcement relating to COVID-19. And I mean, at the very least, like, you know, you're, you know a bit more than you did, hopefully, hopefully, when you started this video. But the most important thing that you can do is wash your hands. Yeah. Sing the song. The day. Sing the song when when what do you do when shit hits the fan? Yeah. Clean the fuck up. Yeah. Just sing that three times and you'll be good. Wash those wash those dirty ass hands. Stay home if you're feeling sick. Uh, or if you're feeling well. Stay home as much as you can. Call of Duty Warzone just came out. Yeah, it's pretty good. Activision has actually helped stifle the spread of this pandemic, yeah. at least for gamers, because they released a free-to-play game that is Pretty damn good. I played yeah. it for a while yesterday. Pretty I damn really good. I really like it. And uh, it's free to play, and it gives you something to do while you're trapped in the house. Yeah. I mean, hang out with your friends in the game. And it's all cross-platform, too. It's yeah. PS4, PC, and Xbox. They, Thank you, Activision. They really swooped in and kind of saved the day here. Yeah, they are the hero that we deserve. Yeah. Thank you, Activision. And we don't say that very much, but yeah. I just want to say thank you. Uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, again, try not to panic. But also understand that this has the potential to get a lot worse before it gets better, especially here in good old America. Yeah. And God bless us here in America. We get what we deserve. <laughs> Joker-fied, baby. Yeah. All right. Watch our other videos over here. Um, we didn't do a podcast this week. Uh, we have family problems. Reasons. We, we'll, we'll talk about it next week uh, or whatever. Uh, but uh, hopefully you're okay with that. We have uh, two videos over here for you to watch. Weekly Weird News and News Dump. Check those out. Uh, and thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye.